A judge in one of Donald Trump's criminal cases related to the January 6th coup attempt has reinstated a partial gag order while a judge in Trump's civil fraud trial has ordered his daughter Ivanka to testify. And on top of that, Trump is apparently confused as to why so many of his ex-lawyers are suddenly pleading guilty in Georgia. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There's something we have to discuss, and it's not comfortable, but it's reality. A man who is once again running for president and could once again hold the most powerful office in the world is very obviously in cognitive decline. I don't like saying it, but we have to face the facts. And again, I know you don't expect to hear this from me, so you can watch the evidence for yourself. Donald Trump just gave a speech today in which he warmly praised Viktor Orban, not as the leader of Hungary, but as the leader of Turkey. Viktor Orban is not the leader of Turkey. You know, I was very honored as a man, Viktor Orban. Did ever, anyone ever hear of him? He's probably like one of the strongest leaders anywhere in the world. And he, uh, he's the leader of, right? He's the leader of Turkey, fronts on both Russia. Trump yesterday incorrectly said Hungary shares a border with Russia. You, know, you have voter ID to buy a loaf of bread. You have, you have ID to buy a loaf of bread. He made a number of, let's how we say, verbal missteps, suggesting that he was running against Barack Obama. And we did with Obama. We won an election that everyone said couldn't be won. He appeared to forget which state he was in, saying he was in Sioux Falls, which is located in South Dakota, while he was actually speaking from Sioux City, Iowa. You know how you spell us, right? You spell us, U.S. I just picked that up. Has anyone ever thought of that? I just picked that up. A couple of days I'm reading, and it said us. And I said, you know, if you think about it, us equals U.S. Their windmills are causing whales to die in numbers never seen before. The windmills are driving them crazy. They're driving, they're driving the whales, I think, a little batty. Well, normally you'd have to stay until after the credits to get a blooper reel that long. <laughs> By the way, if anyone watching this was genuinely tricked into thinking that I was talking about Joe Biden when I was setting up that clip reel, I'd just like to say the name of the show is Late Night with Seth Meyers, and I'm sorry you're currently stuck in a dentist's waiting room. <laughs> oh, first I chip my tooth, then I fall for a classic misdirect. <laughs> now, Trump's brain has obviously been mush for quite some time, but still somehow it seems noticeably worse. And I didn't think that was possible. Over the weekend, for example, he apparently did not know which city or state he was in and had to be corrected on stage. He seemed to think he was in Sioux Falls, which is in South Dakota, rather than where he actually was, Sioux City, Iowa. But don't worry, you guys, once he was corrected, he was super smooth about it. A uh, very big hello to a place where we've done very well, Sioux Falls. Thank you very much, Sioux Falls. And Donald J. Trump. So, Sioux City, let me ask you, how many people come, how many people come from Sioux City? How many people? Huh? How many? Who doesn't come from Sioux City? Nice save, dude. <laughs> as soon as someone told him he was wrong, he came back to the mic and said the word Sioux City as many times as he possibly could. <laughs> Sioux City, we love Sioux City. And what, what better time to be in Sioux City than the fall? Nothing beats Sioux City Falls, or as I call them, Sioux Falls. So as you can see, earlier that was not a mistake, it was an abbreviation. Also, if you're not buying that, a quick hello to my friend in the front row, Sioux Falls. <laughs> we call her that because she trips a lot and also it's her given name. You know how you spell Sue, right? You spell it S-U. And if you spell it backwards, that's... U.S. I was just reading... I was just reading a book upside down and picked that up. Also, I like Trump's reaction to finding out that he was wrong. Oh, it's oh, it's okay. He reacts to finding out He's in a completely different city and state the way you react when a five-year-old tells you the human head weighs 10 pounds. <laughs> oh, is that right? Very good, Timmy. Now go play with some uh, Legos. What's that? Oh, it's Lego bricks, is that right? Well, <laughs> that's not irritating at all. <laughs> it's also telling how different the reactions are when Biden screws up versus when Trump screws up. When Biden so much as stumbles, Democrats everywhere are like, oh, f oh, f we're totally, f who else can we get? Oh, there's nobody. And when Trump screws up, Republicans are like, all right, we live in Sioux Falls now. Who cares? <laughs> when Trump's president, he's going to rename it on a map with a Sharpie.
But the thing I especially love about this moment is that apparently Trump basically predicted that at a rally in 2020, except he predicted it about Joe Biden. Do you ever notice that Biden oftentimes gets the state wrong? He's in Iowa, and he says, it's good to be in Idaho. No, no, you're in Iowa. He's in New Hampshire. And he says, it's great to be in Ohio. No, 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 you're in New Hampshire. That happens to him all the time. Hasn't happened to me yet. Ooh. <laughs> that yet was doing an awful lot of work, wasn't it? <laughs> Although, my favorite part of that clip is what he says next. You know, when that happens, there's nothing you can do to make up for it. You might as well just walk off the stage because the speech is a disaster. Walk off the stage. You should definitely walk off the stage and not immediately come back to the microphone and say Sioux City as many times as you can. Because when you do that, people will definitely be able to tell. In fact, this is apparently a common routine at Trump's speeches. Here's another example. He does it all the time. Nobody calls him for I love the state of Iowa. Sir, sir, it's Idaho. It's Idaho. And the worst is when he's in, like, Indiana, and he says it's great to be with the people of Florida, and you have palm trees all over the place. Anyway, it's been great to be here wherever the <laughs> this was. <laughs> and look, I'm not gonna sit here and deny that Biden also stumbles or gets lost sometimes. He's 80, we get it. The point is, they're both old. We all just age in different ways. When I get to that age, I'd definitely rather be Biden old than Trump old, just telling long stories and crushing people's hands with my blue-collar handshake. You know what you have to be to be able to fall off a bike at 79? Willing to ride one in the first place. <laughs> I want to be walking around my kitchen, muttering to my grandkids about how I used to know a guy named Corn Pop. That seems much more pleasant than screaming nonstop about windmills killing whales and celebrities who were or weren't nice to me back in the day. You know, I used to be on Saturday Night Live. Not many people remember, but it's true. They called it SNL for short. I just picked that up. <laughs> they can't admit it publicly, but Trump's aides must quietly be so happy he's under multiple gag orders in different cases, one of which was just reinstated Sunday night for his election interference case in D.C. Now, to the latest in the federal election interference case against Trump. This is the one brought by special counsel Jack Smith. The gag order in that one on former President Trump has been reinstated after U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin lifted a temporary hold yesterday. And he's already under a gag order in New York. This is just a reminder to the GOP that when someone says to the frontrunner for your party's nomination, the gag order has been reinstated, his response is very likely, which one, Sioux Falls or Sioux City? <laughs> and while the case in D.C. continues to get worse for him, his ex-lawyers continue to fall like dominoes in the Georgia case where he and his co-defendants were charged with trying to overturn the election results there. Several of them have pleaded guilty and agreed to cooperate with prosecutors, and a spokesperson for Trump said Trump couldn't understand why so many of his ex-lawyers were flipping on him. How does the president feel about these former lawyers or his former associates pleading guilty? What are his thoughts on these developments? Well, I think he's a little confused because, look, if you're a lawyer, you know that there's no crimes here. <laughs> According to the law, there's literally nothing to plead guilty to. I assure you, they are very much pleading guilty. It's not like they all walked into court and said, Your Honor, I plead guilty. And then the judge was like, plead guilty to what? And they were like, I don't know. And the judge was like, me neither. I don't even know where we are. All I know, there are so many lawyers here, you might as well call this place. Sioux City. And then, <laughs> on top of all that, there's also the civil fraud trial in New York where Trump is at risk of losing his business empire. Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen, has already testified against him. And now the judge has ruled that Trump's daughter, Ivanka, will have to testify as well. There's a new development to tell you about in the $250 million civil trial against ex-president Donald Trump and his company and his family. Today, Judge Ngoron ruled that the former president's daughter, Ivanka, does have to testify in this case. You know Trump is freaked out about Ivanka having to testify because she seems like she might actually know I have to believe she's the only child Trump trusted to do actual business. Ivanka was crunching numbers while Eric was covering his face in Rogaine and Don Jr. was out sitting on that stump. <laughs> Ivanka taking the stand is bad for Trump because she's the only one who can actually stand. I mean, look at this. <laughs> she's the only one with anything close to normal posture. Why do the rest of them, they all stand like they forgot to take the hanger out of their shirts. <laughs> they all look like they're trying to hide something under their jackets, like they're trying to sneak out of a grocery store with a... Loaf of bread. But in spite... 
of everything, this guy remains the far and away front runner for the GOP nomination in 2024, and he's in a dead heat with Biden and a hypothetical general election matchup. They say you can indict a ham sandwich, but once you've been indicted four times, I think you're less like a ham and more like a turkey. This. <laughs> turkey. This has been a closer look.